In this question, we're filling a cylindrical glass with water from a tap. And we're given the radius of the glass, the rate at which water is flowing out of the tap into the glass, and we're asked to find how fast is the water level in the glass rising. Okay, to solve this, let's see what we're given. The radius is 4 centimeters. So if we look at the glass here, and we, it's a cylinder, so the radius at the top would be here, and it's 4 centimeters. So we can write that down. Radius equals 4 centimeters. Next, we're told that the rate of flow of the water is 40 cubic centimeters per second. So let's write that down. 40 centimeters cubed per second. Well, centimeters cubed is a unit of volume and seconds is a unit of time. So what this represents is the change in volume with respect to time. And we're asked to find how fast is the water level rising. Well, let's take a look at the water level. Here's the water level here. And what that represents here is there's a height to the water. So, what we're asked to find is the change in height with respect to time. So this question has rates involving volume and height. So how do we relate those two together? Well, we can use the volume formula for a cylinder. So volume will equal area times an extra dimension, which in our case is height. And the area would be the area of the circle here, which would be pi r squared, area of a circle. And then we multiply by the height. So our volume is pi r squared h. Now with a cylinder, the radius is always going to be 4 centimeters. There's no change in radius as water level rises. That means that the radius is a constant, so we can just sub it directly into our equation here. So that would give us volume equal to pi 4 squared h. Cleaning that up, we get volume equals to 16 pi h. Now we have a formula that relates volume to height. So if we derive this equation, we'd get the change in volume with respect to height would be 16 pi. We're just using the power rule here, where there really is a 1 on the h here. So 1 times 16 pi is 16 pi. Subtract 1 would give you h to the 0, which would just be 1. Okay, so now we've got dv dh, we've got dv dt, and dh dt. How do we put those together so that they make sense? Well, the chain rule tells us that dv dt would equal dv dh multiplied by dh dt. Notice here that the change in heights would cancel out, so the change in volume with respect to time equals the change in volume with respect to time. So now we can just substitute. Change in volume with respect to time is 40 centimeters cubed per second. So I'll just write the number for now, leave the units out for the moment. We've got uh, change in volume with respect to height. Well, that's 16 pi, so we can put that in there, 16 pi. And then we've got uh, dh dt, or the change in height with respect to time. Well, that's what we want to find out. So we'll leave that in there, dh dt. To isolate dh dt, we're going to get rid of the 16 pi. So we divide both sides by 16 pi. So we end up with 40 divided by 16 pi equals our change in height with respect to time. Cleaning this up a bit, we know that 8 goes into 16 twice and into 45 times. So we end up with 5 over 2 pi is our change in height with respect to time. And if we take pi to be 3.14 and plug it into our calculator, we end up with approximately um, 0.8, and this would be centimeters per second, is our change in height with respect to time. 
let's just double check our units. Remember 40 centimeters cubed per second, that was that part, and the 16 pi was the area, and that would be in centimeters squared. So if we work this out, centimeters cubed per second divided by centimeters squared, well that would give us centimeters cubed per second times 1 over centimeters squared. That goes with that and leaves us with centimeters per second, so our units match up here. So what this is saying is that our water level is going to rise at a constant rate of 0.8 centimeters per second until it eventually fills up. And there you go.